Contract tracing has determined that one of the people who had close contact with Governor Stitt before he tested positive is our colleague, eCapital News Director Sean Ashley. Sean, too, is now in self-isolation. ONR's Jason Doyle spoke with Sean via Zoom, and the obvious first question, how do you feel? So far, so good. I'm just waiting to get my uh, COVID-19 test scheduled and taken. Well, uh, we'll get on with questions. A recent report by our content partners, The Frontier, revealed heated emails between Pardon Parole Board Executive Director Steve Bickley and member Alan McCall. How did that play out in this week's meeting? Well, at this week's meeting, um, Director Bickley was not there. And member Kelly Doyle suggested that was probably because of the ongoing uh, dispute between, the, the, uh, between member Alan McCall and, and Mr. Bickley. Mr. Bickley has a request for an extended leave of absence pending before the board. It was voted on and tied on a two to two vote with one member absent. So it's considered to have failed. They'll take up that issue and Director Bickley's status at a future meeting, either a special meeting or the regular meeting in August. A new lawsuit's been filed over gaming compacts by the legislative leaders. What does this suit involve? Well, it's sort of same song, second verse. Uh, House Speaker Charles McCall and Senate President Pro Tem Greg Treat allege that Governor Stitt violated the Constitution and state statutes when he signed two more agreements with two tribes related to gaming. They say, in addition to exceeding his authority, that certain provisions of those compacts go beyond the statutory authority, including appropriating money, which was an issue raised in the first lawsuit as well. The court has decided not to combine the two suits, so we're waiting to see how they rule on the first one. They've given Stitt and his attorneys time to respond to the, to the case, and then we'll see where the second case goes from there. We've got about 20 seconds left. A new secretary of the land office has been named. Who is it? He is Elliot Chambers. He has a long history in the oil and gas industry, uh, working for companies such as Chesapeake, as well as his own firm. He'll take over August 3rd. The land office has a lot of investments in oil and gas and, and leases in that area, as well as commercial real estate and other type investments which benefit the schools and higher education in Oklahoma. Sean, stay well and thanks for joining us. You're very welcome.